return home and, and garden and you know your plants will grow up over time and so you kind of have this persistent world that you're living in. Well, I have a lot of conclusions that I jump to when you tell me it's like Pokemon, like Harvest Moon. Is there anything that I might be missing by jumping straight to those conclusions? Well, I think it's just those are those are elements that they took from, but then it's its own thing. So it's kind of like what uh, is this it's, shit? it's hard, like I say, to, to talk about until you spend some time with it. I think those are all touchstones, and there's elements of all those games in them, but it kind of becomes its own thing once they're all mashed together in a Ooblet's way. Yeah. And. Is that a like a mushroom companion that's following you? Yeah, so that's one of her ooblets. So when you start, you get to decide like which oh, ooblet house name. you're in, uh, okay. and she's part of uh, kind of more an adventuresome ooblet house, and that's her starting ooblet, uh, Shrumbo. Uh, but there are uh, dozens of ooblets throughout the game that you'll be able to find and train and level up, and they have hats and costumes too. Okay. So you know everything's super customized. It took a while. We're talking about I the type of character get she is. She's more of an adventure ooblets player. Is that, so is that the type of ooblets? Like if I if I decide to watch to through this. Uh, this yeah, garbage. I'm ball, not so, uh, dying of hunger. Kind of the vibe you want to put into the game so you want to start. The that's why I took house, but there's also five kind minutes. Of a cute flowery house. <laughs> there's kind of an emo house, and there's more of like a tech savvy nerdy but, house too. So it's just you know kind what? of like when you pick that, you pick your starting. I don't know what this is. And like frankly, I don't care. And they all have different starting ooblets. But ultimately, but there's ooblets all over the world. Yeah. Okay. Now, was it a choice to make the character run like? Hmm. Like she was blowing in the wind, or her head was super heavy, or something. Because yeah. it's it's a charming way to run, but it's it's definitely it's a, oh, it's a double fine. I don't <laughs> like, like double fine back, games. Like, it's yeah. like the full opposite Naruto. Like. Yeah. I don't think there's a single double fine <laughs> game that I like. Game. And that all comes from Ben or Rebecca. To be honest, two people who made this live in New Hampshire together, and are working on this in their house, and they have a mocap rib. So it's just not my thing. Game is just like them mocapping the runs, or a lot of dancing in this game. There's a lot of dancing. Uh, oh, so but mm. yeah, we're actually about to uh, show a new trailer off in the PC gaming show right after All right. this. So yep. we'll just on to we'll be talking about new mechanics there and a whole new trailer. So you know there's Excellent. no there's no way this can even well, be the worst conference of E3. It's not all possible. The games, uh, well, you can see more of in the, in oh the god PC someone's show, downloading something. Hold on like I mean it's a PC minutes. show so I don't really so, care. Uh, hold on I'll fix this. I look forward to seeing it. Oh. Double fine what, yeah. what's the website we can look at uh, presents.doublefine.com no, 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 no. has all of these games, and then they all have their own websites, and they're all very active on social media and stuff too. So I'd say to track them down on Twitter. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for, for being here and showing. I have my headphones on now, right by the way. To the PC gaming show, so let's go. This is going to be terrible. So, like I said, they have five minutes, five minutes to make me interested. If they can't, then I'm out. I'm done until Sony. I'm also going to continue eating my pizza. Gaming. It says, don't just obey the rules, rewrite them. What the fuck is this? It says, don't just listen to stories, inhabit them. It says, don't just accept the limits, overclock beyond them. It says, don't just play games, revel in them, unleash them. It says, seriously. Is every game battle royale now, or is it just me? From mountain no, it is. To dungeons. I was going to say just you, but then Gears of War space. battle royale. And um, no, Solo it is. Quests to mass engagements. There is magic in PC gaming. Let's celebrate that magic together. This is the PC gaming show. Whoa, who? And now your host, Sean Plot. Oh, hello, hello, hello to everyone online. Oh hello, shit! Will turn. Welcome to the PC Gaming Show. Yes. Bitconnect. Yes. My name's Day Nine. I'm your host today. PC I Gaming so Show. We have a fantastic show for you this afternoon. First, all of you came out to the Wiltern. Thanks for joining us. The Wiltern is just a beautiful venue here. 
in Los well, Angeles to all you online. I already like that they're not sitting down at a desk. That's different from every other year. Hey as well, I'm talking to you drop frames. Great to have you here. And of course, to all the wonderful sponsors that helped make the PC gaming show come back again for the fourth straight year. Now. Ugh. Good on you. It's been four years. It feels like it's been seven. This year, I have my co-op partner up in the balcony. It's Frankie Ward joining us today. How's it going, Frankie? Hey, Sean. I'm and it's not a good in thing. In the balcony with a bunch of creative new PC games coming your way, from Warfare's latest update to some offbeat indie gems. Frankie, we are so excited for the show to get started. We have over 30 games we're going to be looking at across the next 90 minutes. So let's get it underway. Our very first title is from Coffee Stain Studios. Their game has absolutely massive construction as well as automation. Let's take a look at Satisfactory. Holy shit, they're actually showing games in the PC gaming show? No fucking way! Man, I'm really glad I got pizza. Holy shit, I never thought the day would come. The PC gaming show's actually worth watching. Holy shit, I need to get my pencil and paper. They're actually showing off games. What the fuck? I, I, I never thought this was going to happen. All right, you got me. You, it, three minutes and you got me. I gave you five minutes, you, you did it. You fucking did it. You, you crazy bastards, you got me. Fair enough. Man, I'm glad I got something to eat. I, I can't believe it's not just sitting down and talking with AMD about the new CPUs for three hours. This is amazing. This is what the PC gaming show should be. PC games. It only took it four years to get it right. Four fucking years. I, I'm flabbergasted. I've been vilifying the PC gaming show ever since its inception, and if they keep on like this, and they if they really go through 25 games in 90 minutes, it, it, it may be contender for the best conference. I never thought that would be possible either. It's always been a joke. I, I'm blown away. So this is giving me a first-person factorial vibe. Interesting. Satisfactory. Interesting. Joining me on the stage to talk about it is the game director at Coffee Stain Studios. It's Oscar. Jinsen. Holy shit! This is amazing. This is this is amazing. Come here, Oscar. I, Welcome to the stage. I, Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Am I in a fucking dream? Is this a fucking fever dream? So this factory is uh, essentially about building these huge automated factories. Oh my god, production team. I think production team is the same for this as they were for Ubisoft, but... We're gonna build this enormous machine. Uh, let's hint to that at the end of the trailer there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to build that, you need this a audio is awful. Parts, uh, which right. you need to build machines that will make them for you. So you'll start out pretty simple um, with a few machines. Yeah. And then you'll just expand and expand and expand. And They're still doing that interview thing, which I don't trees. really like. Replace them with, like, more convenient concrete. <laughs> but and at least they're not doing it like a sit-down talk game. show and talking about AMD for 10 like years, right. like um, I said previously. Uh, more advanced, like a computer, for yeah. example. Uh, and you'll, at that point, you'll have some copper stuff set up, your wires and cables. But yeah. to make plastic, you need to uh, get some oil. You need to go out and find this oil. And here I was about to end the stream as soon as Ubisoft was over. Of, uh, transport um, with self-driving vehicles between the outpost and your factory. 
Yeah, and I want to talk about that scale because, I, you know, there's a lot of games where you build a house or a small town. How much area are we talking about where all your factories will exist? Oh, th this uh, factory will grow enormous. Uh, the, the main part, which we'll probably... See, what I don't like about this whole interviewing... Or in some well, cases, I should listen to him. ...building these massive, tall buildings with yeah. factory floor upon factory floor. But including the... Um, resources that you need to gather from basically all around the map mm -hmm. yeah so so, so it is a all over. it yeah, is a first, first person first factorial person basically these types of games typically are top down why first person we we want it to feel like the, the player is the one building the stuff yeah okay and, you know when, when you build you've built a bunch of stuff and you can see these i mean it seems cool structures towering yeah. above you but also it seems really the cool for people who like these people types of games go through the underbrush and in the jungle yeah. I mean, in the trailer, it even looked like there's a lot more to explore, like different environments and biomes. Mm, yeah, yeah. The, the, the um, is, uh, the only... Big and varied. Yeah. Uh, mm. And it's, it's about... Uh, I feel like what it does need, though, yeah, is, is it does need an option to yeah, look top-down, like have a drone or something, that so you can see the map from top-down, because otherwise I could see it getting a bit annoying. But it does look now, like that there is an option for that when you're building, but... Uh, planned in the coming months, uh, so you can I'm sign not, up for, uh, for the alpha. I have to look at it. Game uh, and yeah, then you'll know. Well, great, Oscar. Thanks for joining me on stage once again. That is satisfying. Yeah, what I don't like about game. these interviews. Now, up in the balcony, ask okay, things is that our very first indie title of the day. We do indeed. Sean. It's just here's something we love about the PC platform. It's such first. It, it's it's so fake, right? Because you know everything's rehearsed, so you can just have it like everything else. Well, the guy who made the game is coming up and talking about the game instead of this weird. Uh, back and forth conversation that really doesn't help with anything. Indie Studio Chance Agency. Let's watch the first gameplay trailer for Neo Cab. For what? Neo Cap? Neo Cap? Oh, okay, it is Neo Cap. Okay. Music sounds like Fury. Not a fan of the art style, though. It looks like a really old Flash game. Like something you would play on Newgrounds in 2005. Okay. So. This is one of those trailers where it makes sense if you've played the game. It makes sense if you're the developer. But for me and everyone else in the world, this doesn't tell me anything. Now, our next game, believe it or not, is in the Battle Royale genre. Of course, it's E3 2018. What do you expect? We have several Battle Royale games we're going to be talking about today because the Battle Royale format is very simple and very flexible. Players play... I really hope that's a joke. ...space until there's one last standing. I really hope that's a joke. ...all kinds of different explorations of what this could possibly be. And our very first Battle Royale game we'll be introducing today has up to 1,000 concurrent players. It's from Automaton Games. Let's look at Maverick's Proving Grounds. It's not a joke. Guys, he's not joking. Oh, God. So, at least two of these 25 games are Battle Royale games. Nobody gives a fuck about Battle Royale. Actually, actually the sad part is people do. Oh, God. Maybe this is the Battle Royale game Devolver Digital was talking about that they had. It's finally here. 
We're finally seeing it for the first time. Oh, great. Weapon skins. And you know what that means. Microtransactions and loot boxes. That... That... If, if I didn't want to play this game already, seeing that has... Like, no matter what's in this game now, no, ma no matter what you have to show for this game, there's no way I'm going to play it. Or buy it. No way, even if it's free to play. Absolutely no way. How is that man not shooting you? How terrible is he? This is all pre-rendered bullshit, by the way. All of that gameplay was pre-rendered bullshit. Yeah, fuck that. Joining me on the stage to talk about Mavericks Proving Grounds is the CEO of Automaton Games. It's James Thompson. I like how I like how the numbers are going up now that people realize this is an actual conference with people talking about games. What about prove or excuse me, Mavericks Proving Grounds distinguishes itself from other Battle Royale games? It doesn't. It's a very popular formula, and you know that Last Man Standing kind of game type is incredibly compelling by itself. But Mavericks is really about depth. You know, we've already talked about 400 players before, and we're sort of super excited today to talk about our five-man squad mode being thousand players. But really, it's it's about depth as well. It's about the fact that yeah. that environment is even a bigger step. The simulation. Oh, the fuck off. Yeah, I, I want to zoom in right on the 1,000 players aspect. How does that really shift the dynamic from the, say, 100 that we're typically used to? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really about combining scale with the depth of simulation. So the fact that together, what you actually have is a landscape that means you're making decisions off a lot more information. Uh, so he, okay, I'm going to go through the bullshit filter in here, and here's what he's trying to say to you. There's nothing unique about this game. It's not a shitty Battle Royale game. We're putting a thousand people in a, in a game in order to make it go on even longer and make you waste more of your time. There's nothing interesting about 1,000 players. We just thought, hey, we could put 1,000 players in it to make people look at that and go, ooh, maybe I should buy that because there are 1,000 players. But it's not interesting at all. It just slows the game down. So we draw from the MMORPG side of things. It's really a full world, not just a map. You know, so it's got a persistent game type side to it too. It's a full world, not just a map. Just launched our site right now, so if you're interested in signing up for the closed beta, uh, you can do that now at mavericks.gg slash closed hyphen beta. And uh, actually, if you register this week, you'll get special in-game content for free from E3. Awesome. And we have only 100,000 slots for the first group signing up, so right on. that will give you some beta access. But cool. I'm sure there are a lot more people than that on the stream, so quickly do that if you're interested in. Well, James, thanks so much for joining us. Once again, that's maverick.gg. Our very next game... Helps showcase the extraordinary that was a waste of time. power of modders. Frankie, tell us about it. It does indeed, Sean. On PC, we don't just play what's given to us. We mod games to make our own experiences. And for many developers, modding is a way to turn a hobby into a career. Games mod too, baby! Perfect example. It's a standalone game that's a reimagining of a wildly successful mod. In fact, the first mod in history to win a National Writers Guild Award. For the first time ever. Here's gameplay from the Forgotten City. The Forgotten City. Okay. A mod, huh? Modding, huh? I'm so sorry you had to find me like this. Your the award winning mod. I, I don't even know what that would be. spent a lifetime in this place an ancient underground city its existence long forgotten searching for a way out all i found is a window into the past if even one person here commits a sin everyone will die i tried to set things right but whatever i did this looks terrible Bend the rules 
things as far as you can. This looks so boring. Sorry, sorry, I fell asleep. What's next for killing? Um, is that it? And an unannounced game from Tripwire Interactive. And now your host, Sean Plot. <clears throat> Our next game is a blast from the past. What was that transition? Prequel or prequel or remake, but rather an entirely new game altogether. Let's take a look <clears throat> at Star Docs Star Control Origins. Long ago, the singularity formed. Its creators uplifted into something beyond our understanding. Singularity 2, baby! Now known as the Lexites, left Earth, traveling to multiple no, planets in our it's not. system. Before vanishing altogether. This is why we are here. Welcome to Star Control, a state-of-the-art international space agency tasked with the exploration of our solar system and the defense of Earth. Here resides the world's brightest minds and greatest technology, brought together by a strong... Okay, so this is four games in a row that I couldn't give less of a shit about. Help us pioneer the future. I think. Let's see, Neocab, Battle Royale shit... Something that's a mod apparently, and this. Oh my god. Oh my god. What the hell? Is this game from 2003? Am I missing something here? Jesus. Yeah, this game looks terrible. A new alien in a delightful new spaceship. You must be humans. I don't know what I don't know what I could compare it to, but it doesn't look good. It looks very, very dated. Notice how no one's clapping. That's pretty good. Joining me to talk about Star Control is the director of production. At yeah, it, it, it looks Sean boring. It looks really today, dated. Yeah, thanks for having me here. It looks so like whatever gameplay what mechanics Star they have are really Star simple. It's like a game that you would get on uh, PopCat. That's what it looks like. And when you're driving around the planets, you can jump over canyons, uh, blast critters, and then you can venture out into the solar system and do ship-to-ship -ship combat with hostile aliens. And I, I want to ask, since I know that the story is a big part of this game, with it being open world, how do you make sure that the story still stays as the focus for the player? Yeah, so we're really excited about the story that we prepared for Star Control. It's funny, it's creative, um, but also has some dark, uh, sinister side to it. Uh -huh. I'm very proud and very excited about is we have an infinite universe. That is, we are fully simulating the entire universe at all times. So even if you're on some home oh. dunk little This is giving me no man's sky vibes, only worse. Doing their own thing, exploring and interacting. Look at look at that text box. This game is straight out of 2003. Right, exactly. So this is the this uh, infinite universe is the glue that connects my story, my adventure. To what a crock of awesome. shit! Now I know modding is going to be a big part of Star Control Origins. How does the modding work? So what's your favorite science fiction show? Probably Firefly. Yeah. So what would you think of making Firefly season two? Shit, that's a lot of pressure, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're putting me on the spot on stage right now. Yeah. We have. No, we can do it. So. Um, but anyways, in Star Control. I know they can't Origins, see me, but. Ships, Planets, your own galaxies, you can package up your adventures and share I, I think I look more dead than I ever have in my life listening to this. What if you can make Firefly Season 2? Get off the stage! Piss off! We should make this a separate gameplay mode. So we did. We called it Fleet Battles. 
So you can create your own ships, you build them out of different pieces and parts, you attach different weapons and defenses, and then you go online to play them. You can either play local multiplayer, two people on the same machine, or online ranked online. Play online ranked, ranked for this. <laughs> well, right now, Star Control Origins... There aren't going to be enough people playing the game to find a match. Guys, definitely be sure I can see the Steam charts right now. Six players in game. And check them out on Steam and GOG as well. And one more thing. We are happy to announce at the PC Gamer Show that uh, Star Control Origins is launching on September 20th, 2018. Look for it on September 20th. Our next game is the gamer's favorite game from E3 last year. It is Hunt Showdown from Crytek. Let's take a look at what's coming for Hunt Showdown. Oh, isn't Showdown. this Crytek's Battle Royale game? It might be. I, I don't remember, though. I It was that or it was an actual good game. I don't remember, though. It, it was that or it was Stalker Ask, if I remember rightly. But I, but I do re remember seeing this. Okay, it's not Battle Royale. Thank God. Okay, this looks cool. This looks really cool. Buy it now on Steam. I like I like how they were just like, here's gameplay, you can buy it right now. Cool. Guy, now Hellfire, in fact, sorry, Archangel was originally a single player narrative game, but Hellfire, this new edition, what changes Man, that was a terrible transition. Players really loved the single player narrative, but they all kept telling us the same thing. They said, We really want it multiplayer and we want it off rails. And we kind of thought, that's a completely different game. Oh. But let's give it a shot. Uh, and so we got a crack team together. Uh, it's mostly really positive. Stable. We got four maps. We got six different mechs. Tons of weapons where you could just blast through the Oh, it's been out since the 22nd like. of February. Really Why put it on... Experience. You can zip around in your mech. You well, I guess for people like me who haven't... It's just something special. Who didn't know it was is this coming released. out early access? So you just said we can try it right now, but you've got the full version launching soon, right? Correct. Yeah, it's coming out in July 17th. Uh, but you can try it right now if you want an early access. Help us iron out the kinks and uh, break some mechs along the process. Uh, I am no good at ironing out kinks, as I think people at home can see, Guy. But as a heavy mech woman, I can't wait for you to be my light mech wingman in that 2v2 PvP. Archangel so Hellfire. Hellfire. Recent reviews mix all reviews mostly positive. Came out August of last year. It's a VR game. A, a VR game that's mostly positive. Okay, you, you people have to understand. In the VR community, every VR game, no matter how short or how terrible it is, is always a godsend. So for something, a VR game to be mostly positive, that's basically the equivalent of a normal game on Steam being rated mostly negative or if not overwhelmingly negative so Our next title is one of okay and that gave me no information on it so great not even going to talk about that afterwards the sinking city and joining me to talk about it is the community manager at frogwares sergey Oganisian. Welcome, Sergey. Thanks for joining me today. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you've earned a handshake. Yeah, you Welcome nailed that pronunciation. I love that you lie to me so kindly. You know, I want to ask right away, the Sinking City, you know, there's Great. a lot of open Great. It's a dragon off main. And you know how we think of those people. Well, I mean, the Sinking City is an open world action investigation game inspired by Lafra. And we believe that these three elements already make the game pretty unique. And you know what? Oh, I know this game. This looked neat. Supernatural world full of mystery and, you know, cosmic fear. Like, I really mean it because investigations are really at the core of the Sinking City. Yeah, this is a game I've been interested in. games in the open world genre that are focused on action, but you say investigation is at the core. What what are investigation mechanics? What does it look like? So, the first thing you should know right off the bat is that we are not going to offer any hand-holding for the player. 
We will not give That's you good. any clear objectives in your diary or, you know, markers on the map telling you where to go or what to do. It's actually up to you to figure that out. Instead, we will give you information, you know, hints, evidence, like clues, crime scenes to examine, like people to talk to, suspects to question. And we will ask you in return to use your wits and your intuition to, you know, experiment with your findings, you know, maybe like find a way how to progress. And what you should also know is that finding these clues will not only help you understand what's going on, and you know, uh, yeah. get a better understanding of the world and its people, but it will also help you maybe change the course of your investigation. You know, you mentioned the world itself. I mean, the footage that I've seen through the years has just been absolutely beautiful. Talk to me about the world that we're in and what investigation is at the core. So the game takes place in this fictional city of Oakmont in the state of Massachusetts. You know, the city which is flooded. There is a terrible disaster. Man, I, I think you need a uh, and also, like, it's a construction crew to, to, to help with the house because I think it's I think it's gonna start coming down soon. The city, they are very different, like different social classes, uh, gangs, cultists, poor people, rich people, but they are all yeah. united by fear. You know, they are all afraid. Maybe except for the cultists. The animations are that, uh, a bit off. You know, for their lives. Because of the flood, because of the but then again, that's not the, the point of the game, is it? What's going on. We want to understand what lies be behind this ostensibly supernatural uh, flood. And what's even funny is that while everybody is afraid, nobody wants to leave. But this is kind of a different story. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, we've talked a little bit about the story world and how it's inspired by Lovecraft. What about the game mechanics? You've mentioned the sanity mechanic in the past. Indeed, we do have a sanity mechanic which, which directly impacts gameplay. You know, when our hero is under a lot of stress, when he sees like something supernatural, something disturbing, or even when he's making a choices in the story which he's not comfortable with making, uh, you know, he will begin to lose his sanity. Uh, I don't like he sandy will, mechanics. He will have hallucinations. He will start to hear distorted sounds, yeah. which will allow uh. to understand that something is actually going wrong. Maybe we need to, you know, step back and do something about that. As of right now, we're still fine-tuning this mechanic because we are still looking, you know, for the sweet spot between yeah. impact on the gameplay and impact on the story. I really hate sanity mechanics. What are the sweet monsters that we're going to get to see in the game? Oh, we have different Ugh. kinds of monsters. We have different kinds of archetypes, you know, with different abilities. And, you know, we actually give you tools. The game is not about fighting monsters. Investigation is the right. core of the game. But we give you tools to defend yourself. So we give you weapons, we give you skills, we give you even so certain, like, traps. In return, we ask you that yeah. you make a decision, because the game is about making a decision. Uh, ammunition is scarce, and you will have to adjust your tactics accordingly. So, I know a lot of people have all sorts of questions about what the game is like. Where can they go to find out more information? Uh, so, if you're hungry for more, you can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Okay. Uh, this is where we post our updates regularly. Facebook, The Simpkin City Game. So, basically, we got no information on that and wasted a bit of our time. to go if you want to learn more. Well, I'm super excited personally to see how it turns out. Thanks for joining me on stage, Sergey. I'm less interested in it because they have that sanity mechanic. Now, our next game is a PC title that has only gotten better oh, for, over the for last least. few years, and I'm always excited to hear what they have in store. Frankie is Before up make on the decision. with the developers of Warframe. Talk to me, Frankie. Well, oh, good, Warframe! Warframe! Warframe is a game that I care a lot about. I'm so excited to hear about fucking Warframe. Yay! God, it took too much. It took way too much to get into Warframe. I don't, I, I, I can't get into it at all. I, I tried playing it many years ago, and it, it's, it looks cool, it feels cool to play, but it takes so much investment to get into, at least when I played it, that I don't, that I can't be bothered. I'm sure if people will play Warframe, this is going to be great, because I know a lot of people play Warframe, and it looks like a great game if you can get into it. For me... I, so the sacrifice is I, I'm not going to play it. Our cinematic quest. It continues a story that we started in the second dream, continued with the war within, and then apostasy prologue. So at the end of last year, we kind of shattered some hearts and uh, left them with a bit of a plot twist. And I'm not going to spoil it for people who want to maybe catch up. Uh, but what I can say is that obviously from the trailer that you saw, the wait for Umbra, the three-year wait for the Umbra Warframe is finally over. Uh, the creepy guy. Those are some impressive the hops. There, Ballas, plays a pretty big role in this quest. And uh, again, not going to spoil a lot, but I can say 
that it's coming this week on PC. Man, you jumped across you all of those racks just for a sword. Well, put, as well as the yeah. update, you're working towards Pentacon right now. Yes, so and it was stuck in a rock too, so it, you still need to shop in it. Why would you go through all that trouble? It can't be that good. What do you think the mega reveal at Tenno Live is going to be? Can you tell me you think about this this Umber thing that's maybe going on or whatever? This is why I mean. A lot of people like Warframe. A lot of people are going to be excited about this. Great for them. I could never get into it. Then again, I haven't played since 2014. So, it's probably changed a lot since then, but... I just, I... I I'm not interested enough to try to invest myself into it. Pour their heart and soul into what we do for TennoCon, and I know for me it was literally like the best day of my entire career. I know Rebecca, our community director at home, was watching. Um, but last year when we did the Plain Divide Alon, you know, open world expansion reveal, uh, Rev and I were actually doing that as a live demonstration in front of everyone, and we had practiced it for months. He's come. He's slowly walking back on the stage, guys. Look at him. And we actually, he's like, there. He's waiting. It's pitch black on stage. He's waiting in anticipation. Drop the gun, man. They're going to be done soon. <laughs> if you watch Ten Alive this year, if you're there, uh, you can definitely probably count on some tears and some emotions because it's, it's a really big day for us. So basically, bring tissues, right? Bring tissues for yourself, for me, for everyone involved because there will be some tears. Right? But um, if you can't get to Tenacon because unfortunately it is sold out, how can you watch it online? So on twitch.tv slash Warframe, you can definitely check it out. And uh, PC Gamer is also hosting as well. Just the other thing too. And you get free but keep making expansions and so keep adding your, to the uh, war to your Twitch account, so much. For players who are invested into the game, that getting into the game nowadays is very, is very hard, if not impossible, because there's so much to absorb in, with the game. It's they become a prolific publisher of Japanese games known for their fully featured ports, especially beloved by this guy on the left. I'm on the right, but thanks. Resonance, both to PC and console the same day, and Shenmue is going to be coming later this year. They have all sorts of games coming up. Let's take a look at what Sega's got in store. I'm interested. I like Sega's a company, usually. So I'm excited for whatever they're bringing to PC. Yeah, Valkyria. Bayonetta, yep. Yep, Vanquish. Puyo Puyo Tetris, yep. Oh, shit! Oh my god! I haven't seen this game in so long! Oh, I'm going to be playing the shit out of this! No! You are not bringing Yakuza to PC. No. I will actually buy it again. I will buy it again if Yakuza Kiwami comes to PC. No fucking way. I mean, it's the PC gaming show, though. It... No. Are they doing that for Kwame too? Valkyria Chronicles Four? Yakuza Zero? Oh, that 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 was sport. That was what they show was actually really heavy spoilers. Ah, uh, that's not good. Yeah, and another one. Okay, I, they're showing a lot of spoilers here, but they are actually bringing Yakuza 0 and Kiwami to PC. Holy shit! Holy 
fucking shit! Oh my god! Well, I'm gonna wait to buy Yakuza Kiwami 2 if it comes to PC then. Holy fuck! Three new games and the first ever gameplay footage of Overkill's The Walking Dead. And now your host. I don't know what to say. Yakuza on PC? And I'm back. Holy fuck! Our next guest is a regular here at the PC gaming show, having attended all four years. Frankie's I... up in the balcony, it's trip. I can't believe it. John, if you are anything like me, you probably need to let off steam every once in a while. Jesus I fuck. I can't think of a better way to do it than by kicking back and tearing up a load of monstrous enemies. It's kind of either that or pushing the office photocopier out Hold the on. window. Hold on. Hold on. I'm I'm looking right yeah, now to see if I can get this on get Steam. With that in mind, I am thrilled to I'm I'm going I'm loading Steam TV. right fucking now. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> Got a lot of fans in the audience. Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen to that applause. Yep. I don't give a shit about yeah, killing so floor 2. Latest from Tripwire and Killing Floor 2 is. Yep, we've been really busy working on Killing Floor. And we got some, uh, we got four major updates that are coming out this year. I don't care! In March, yeah, because I'm PC! Really soon. coming tomorrow, but what's involved? Yeah, so we're bringing the Summer Sideshow back, but this time we're mixing Circus Freaks with Steampunk in a really fun, exciting way. And we have a really cool new uh, system that we're adding. It's called the Weapon Upgrade System. And with this, there's 73 different weapons that we have in our game, and each one you can uh, upgrade it and make it viable for late play. So it really adds a lot of creativity to your loadout. So I'm really excited to get that in people's hands. So you can make your boy but your boy Hold go on. big. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I'm still well, waiting for it so to connect to. Joining us today, Bill. Let's take a look at the trailer for Trek. My Steam Guys, account. I show. Does anyone play Killing Floor 2 anymore? I feel like it died off really quickly. Jesus God, look at this. Oh. Okay. Oh. Well, it didn't like that. Okay. Okay. So it's not on Steam yet, but it's coming. Holy fuck. I I never thought that was going to happen, honestly. I'm really happy that it is, though, because that means more people can... Play Yakuza and experience the masterpiece that it is. I mean, it's my favorite game of all time, Yakuza 0 on PC. How can I not be happy? Oh, Mrs. Foster. Okay. I prefer Mr. Foster, but whatever. So new weapons, new map. Fossey, joke for you. Optician says my eyes are okay. I say, then how do you explain my husband? <laughs> now, as in that wasn't. Tradition, the content that you just saw that was will be good. available tomorrow, including a free weekend for PC this weekend. Definitely check it out with Killing Floor 2, but that's not all that Tripwire has. I have the president of Tripwire himself, John Gibson, on stage. John, welcome back again. Thanks, Sean. Pleasure to be here. Now, I understand that Tripwire is stepping into also doing publishing. What does that entail? That's right. So, Sean, it's really challenging for developers right now. Oh, With thousands boy. Of games that are coming out every year. Yeah. It's really that's, not, that's not exciting and because and remember how I put loot boxes so in the Killing Floor 2? Fair deals. Yeah. Helping them rise above that noise so they can get noticed. And microtransactions. Developing our own games and publishing our own games. Yeah. With marketing, funding, mentoring, feedback. 
to help them succeed. Yeah, I mean, the game that we have on screen is one of those games. This is Road Redemption. That is right. Hey, it's been a while since I've seen this. We're going to be publishing Road Redemption. We're going to be helping them grow and succeed even more on Steam, but also bring the franchise beyond Steam. Now, I know today you have a world oh. exclusive new game. Hasn't been announced we yet. We do. Nobody knows. Before we roll the trailer, I was wondering if you give me a little bit of a tease. Yeah, so we're working with... Or well, just roll the trailer games. because it's a press uh, conference. Alex Quick. Oh, yeah, right. <sighs> So if you're familiar with the Killing Floor universe, you know Alex Quick was the modder that created the original Killing Floor mod, which Tripwire worked with Alex to bring commercial. Mm -hmm. And then Alex went off, assembled his own team, made the game Depth, which was sharks and humans fighting each other. Very, mm -hmm. very successful. And now it's come full circle. We're working with Alex again, and we're going to bring his all-new game to market. NAC 3! Right now, world-exclusive new upcoming game from Tripwire. Knack three, baby. Close your eyes and imagine a place where the sun is bright and the beaches are white. A place filled with southern charm where the water is as warm as the welcome. So come feel the wind in your sails. Kick back and relax. Enjoy the local cuisine. Your dream vacation is waiting for you here on the Gulf Coast. Nom. Nom, 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 nom. Feed. Feed on them. Nom, 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 nom. Feed on the crocodile. Feed on the fishermen. Go Eat to them all. Com now. To book your vacation, operators are standing by. Yeah, okay. Hasn't that kind of game been done? So you get to play as the shark. You are the shark. I think on PlayStation 2. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't remember what it was called, but I, I know for a fact that that exact same game has been done before on PlayStation 2. I'm pretty sure it was PlayStation 2. There is a shark skill tree. Really? So... There is a full single player campaign. You eat your way I don't it. know. You get bigger teeth. It doesn't look interesting to me. They didn't show any gameplay. I didn't realize this was a power fantasy I needed so badly. <laughs> well, it already exists. Now, where can look it up. Go to get more information about it. They can go to maneatergame.com. All right. I doubt anyone will forget that here. That's maneatergame.com. John, thanks so much for joining me on stage. Yeah. Once again, Doesn't look that interesting to me. Showcased earlier about Killing Floor 2 and Road Redemption will be playable here at E3. Definitely be sure to check it out. Coming up next, Frankie has a whole slew of unannounced games. Frankie. Cheers, oh boy, I, I hope they would be. There, and I can't believe they named a game after my favorite weekend activity. Indies are the heart of PC gaming, and next up is a brand new publisher revealing three games for the very first time, releasing one of them, Behave Yourselves Audience, today. So let's take a look. Okay. Uh, okay, that's great. Can... Okay, yeah, okay. Well, I don't think you've seen EA then. Uh huh. That that okay. That's great. Can can you tell us what they are? You, get back. You. I mean. You are pretty boring. But okay. Thanks for that. Ay ay ay. Oh boy. Music's interesting. Ah, oh, it's a turn based combat game.
Bravery what online? Bra bravery something. I couldn't read that text. And a farming game. Or not? Okay. Okay. You you've my interest is back. You almost made me write you off as a terrible company. Morning Star. Okay, you gave me no information on the game whatsoever, but thanks for that. Okay. This looks like a really edgy old school ass game. Lots of red. R I really do not like the ca color palette here. It's very confusing. Yeah, every everything's just red. I I do not like that at all. Yeah. No. No. Things blend in with the background. Every, over, overwhelm. Okay. Yeah, everything just blends together. It doesn't look that interesting. It's confusing. All these games look like must plays. And only <laughs> the final game Did you the see them? On Steam right now with a special launch discount. So make sure How much is it? Check that out after the show. And if you're at E3 this week, head over to the PC Gamer corner of the Facebook booth. It's eight bucks. South Hall to give Overwhelm a try. Right. Next up, it's time for us all to take a holiday. And where better than a virtual resort with some truly spectacular wildlife? Back again this year, our friends of the show, Frontier Not worth Development, it. with a unique take on the park management genre. It's I normally am, ten. Of course, talking about Jurassic World Evolution. The long awaited game is oh, another lets you build your own dinosaur stuff city management game only has dinosaurs. And meet the Goldblum. Woo hoo. Another one of these games. Wow. I really need another world building game. I'm really excited for this thing that's already been released. Because they believed that they were in control. And control. Well, here's the thing. At least I think it's been released. I know press copies have been given out. We are seduced by it, deceived by the illusion of it, but we never really possess it. Because if there's anything that chaos theory has taught us, it's that nature is on its own course, and when we interfere. Oh no, it releases tomorrow. Okay. Chaos destroys them. And what makes us such unique creatures is knowing the scope and power. I mean, if you're a Jurassic Park fan, and still believing that we can win, then this would be cool. Well, I, I take that back because I kind of like Jurassic Park. If you're a Jurassic Park fan and you really, really, really like world building games, I mean, you have to really like them because otherwise so it's just another game. one. Our next title is from Insomniac, who've been making amazing games for years. And they're okay, Insomniac, you got me there. Question. How do you make an open world game in VR? Let's take a look at their upcoming... Uh, you don't, story. because the technology isn't there, and it's going to be fucking shit. Oh, God, I'm already not interested at all. I mean, it's made by Insomniac, but... God, I don't like VR. I really don't. Anything VR-related, I just do not give a fuck about. 
I would care more if I don't have a VR headset, I think. Which is impressive. Yeah, it's like, it's like I was saying during the Ubisoft conference, VR shooting games do not work. The technology just isn't there for them to work well. Uh, oh, so we play as Bastion, okay. Yeah, it... And I think the main thing it comes down to is the movement system. The movement system for, for VR is absolute fucking garbage. And I think the only way you can really rectify it and make it good and fun to play is a VR treadmill. I think that's the only way you can do it. Because otherwise you have to rely on using one of your hands in order to move around and unless someone comes up with some brilliant new technology that I can't think about right now in relation to VR that that's how it's going to be and it, it doesn't it doesn't work Nice pixelation now, lads. Unless that was intentional. But I don't think it was. Yeah. Not at all interested. I guess it's good that bigger publishers are getting into making VR games now. That That's certainly a good thing. Uh, don't tell me it's not kills exclusive. <sighs> okay, no, it is coming to the Vive. It, it looks, I mean, it flashed for a second, but I thought I saw Vive in there. But, I mean, even, even if it's Akio's exclusive, you can still mod it to work for the Vive. VR games are, are absolute garbage. Hey, Chad, welcome to the stage. Thank you. I want to start right away and ask, what is this game all about? Well, in Stormland, you play as an android... I, I have played too many VR games and have been disappointed in every single one of them to give a single fuck about whatever this is. Sirento, Payday, Onward, Hot Dogs, Horses, and Hand Grenades, I'm sure some others, what else? See, I can't even remember them. Gorn. I mean, that's not really a shooter, though, is it? But it still falls under the same category. Pavlov. Uh, Serious Sam. Super hot. All, all of them. All of them. Tales of Glory. All of them. I, I think a garbage. Because you can't... You just... VR technology is too new. And people are trying to make that, that, games that, that are too advanced for VR technology right now. Like this. You can't aim with weapons in VR because there is no weight to them and, and developers don't know how to put proper physics properties on the weapons to make you be able to aim them so you try aiming and it wiggles everywhere and you can't aim it and then you just get frustrated you try moving but you have a weapon in two hands and you need to move well suddenly you're moving you're moving to the wrong side and it feels like you're on a goddamn uh treadmill it feels like you're on a constantly moving treadmill when you're using vr and but you're on a treadmill that's not moving it's 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 kind of like a hoverboard i guess and it's just it feels dumb and terrible and there's no immersion in VR either. You still know you can. You still like I'm holding two controllers in my hand. I'm 
holding two bulky controllers in my hand. I have to use the left stick or the left trackpad on my left controller in order to move. And oh boy, I'm moving so slow. Can I speed this up? No, I can't. I can just go slow. Well, that's great. Now, I gotta ask, where can we go for more information? <sighs> well, um, you can uh, stay tuned uh, by watching... Oh, I want to punch yeah. this man. Can I punch this man? Oh, no, I can't because they didn't implement that in feature into the game. Yay. VR is shit, and I don't give a single fuck about that. Frankie's up in the balcony with our next absolutely gorgeous-looking indie title. It really is, John, because next up we've got a first look at a new game from publisher Raw Fury. A neo-noir detective drama featuring a Paris cabbie who finds himself drawn into a world of crime. Sacre Roddy Bleu. Yes, I speak French. I can't wait for this one, so let's take a ride with the trailer. For some reason, I doubt she actually speaks French. Rating pending. So got half an hour of this, and there's still another Battle Royale game coming. Oh, God. Oh, no. Well, it looks like an indie game. I'll give it that. This is the cabbie. Two. Cab harder. Night call, okay. My ears are bleeding. If you like that last game, you'll definitely I didn't. love our next one. It's from the exact same publisher, Raw Fury. Well, I'm not interested. Narrative focused game with an incredible art style. Let's take a look at Sable. Sable, huh? Oh, this thing. This looks very strange. It reminds me of Tiny and Big. Except less budget, somehow. It seems like it's one of those open world, no real objective type of games. I'm not a fan of those. Or well, a vague objective at the very least. Well, given this though, the art style is unique. The art style is very unique. I'm not sure if I like it or not, though. Holy shit, I spelled it right when I wrote it down. I can't believe it. Pretty much the entire core development team on stage. Wow, two people. Alright. I want to immediately ask, what kind of game is Sable? What can we expect? Sable is an open world desert exploration game. It's not a game about combat or about leveling up it's a game about solitude and it's a game about exploration yeah uh, you play yeah disable, uh, go so i was right home, uh, the, these kinds of games i'm not a fan of filled with monumental architecture fallen spaces yeah seeing it in gameplay i like the art style of it it's very different it's very unique which is a rarity nowadays for something completely unique but I, this is not a game I would buy or play. Even if it was free, I wouldn't play it. 
Japanese animation, um, particularly Studio Ghibli. So um, we really want to feel. Really, I don't really get a Studio Ghibli vibe from, from this. From watching one of their films, and so from the very beginning, we we knew that we really needed to nail the visual style, and uh, yeah, so we put a lot of time and sort of effort into our rendering system, uh, and hmm. yeah, we're really pleased to be able to show it to everyone. Yeah. And I mean, I know that you two. I mean, I can, I can, I guess I can see it kind of in the the world, yeah, so and how the world moves and how the character moves. But in terms of the actual yeah, art yeah, style, yeah, right. she, not really. Uh, Michelle, um, she is doing the soundtrack for the game. Um, Japanese Breakfast is one of my favorite bands right now. Uh, it's incredible. To have well, I mean, it, it all just came together so beautifully in the trailer, and I know. I mean, it looked really good considering only two people worked on it, right? Sharing what's going on with the development. Where can people go to find more? Uh, so they can go to our Twitter account, Shedwick's Reg and Shedwick's Stand, or to SableGame.com. Lovely gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. Once again, the name of the game is Sable. Our next title is one that has been in development. I wonder how much it'll cost. Up in our very first PC gaming show. I feel like it Cloud can't be more than five bucks. Still hard at work on their title, Star Citizen. Let's see what they have in store. Oh god. Star Citizen. Oh no. Wasn't there a huge problem with this game recently? I feel like there was some sort of lawsuit. And th this game has been in development for so long. I mean, yeah, great. It still looks good. I'm kind of jaded at this point, though, in regards to this game because of how long it's been in development. Like, I, I, I mean, I appreciate that they're spending time on this game and they're making sure they get everything right and they make sure it's a good game. But it's been so long. You can show me all of the gameplay trailers that you want. You can show me all of the pre-rendered bullshit that you want. I'm just jaded at this point. I want a release date. And I want actual people playing the game. That's that's the only thing that's going to interest me anymore. Hey! Still no release day. PC gaming show. All new gameplay footage of Still no release day. And no one was surprised. Season. All new gameplay footage of Hitman. And now your host, Sean Plot. As we do each year at the PC Gaming Show, in addition to talking about games, we're also going to talk about some of the upcoming hardware trends. To join me in talking about it is a senior brand. But remember, guys, you can play it really soon. Joining me up here, Eric. Sean, really excited to be here. Now, I, I just want to straight up ask, what are the, some of the big trends that consumers can be expecting right now? Well, right now, we're developing some new products, particularly in the display space. We want to take... Oh, great. They're talking the about level. PC so, hardware. Just, just kill me. It's an incredible gaming display. For instance, it's 4K and 120 hertz refresh. <sighs> I mean, it had to happen, right? It, really takes it had to happen. The inclusion of G-Sync HDR. Yeah, now I hear a lot about HDR. Can you explain a little more in detail what that is and what that means? Well, there's a, quite a bit that goes into it. They've had, I think they've had uh, 20 the games, if my count is right. I didn't write one down. I skipped it because there was nothing about it. Um, I don't even remember what it was. It was at the beginning. But... Including that, there have been 20 games, including Sega's PC announcement, unless you count all of those games that were announced for PC, in which case, there are no more games. But they said there was not a Battle Royale game. So, I... I don't know. There's a wide variety of some photorealistic, some with a really iconic Actually, no, if all of Sega's PC releases counted well, as an individual the game, then the the there's gamut. one more game, and it's a Battle Royale game. Of the Adobe color gamut. So it's better representing the vision of the art director. 
Yeah, and some of the games that you see on screen that support HDR, Mass Effect Andromeda, Far Cry 4, Nino no Kuni 2, uh, again, you won't see them in HDR right now unless you have an HDR monitor. It doesn't work that way. We can't just stream it to you. But, you know, it brings me to one of my next questions about PC gamers tend to have a huge range of possible budgets. What are the different sort of products to look for at those price ranges? Well, I mean, we cover the, the gamut from uh, very simple and to the point to high performance esports products or <coughs> multi view surround multi display products. But we also go really crazy sometimes. We Ladies decide, and gentlemen, we put our digital sports. We do, we have yeah, no yeah. Limit. So one of the projects we've worked on is something called the Predator 21 app. Esports gaming. Screen, uh, laptop. By the way, Devolver's loot box coin changed price once from $135 to $150 and it hasn't changed since. So they lied about changing every hour on the hour, which is disappointing. case to protect the laptop. And it sells for $9,000. And we sold every single unit we could make. So we cover every spectrum of gaming. You know, you brought up this Predator laptop, you brought up the Predator monitors at the start of this segment. Where can people go to hear more about or even pick one up once they stop being sold out? So the, that's the good news is that we're shipping now. Our customers, partners are selling them. The bad news is a few have already sold out of this new Predator. Let's play Google Feud. Why do I feel so lonely? Oh, that's not how you spell lonely. Lonely. Sad. They're back for crazy ideas in our next game genesis alpha one you build and manage a space vessel farm resources deal with terrifying alien infestations and explore a vast randomly generated universe oh and you can take dna from the aliens you encounter across the galaxy genesis alpha one new life forms. just a typical day at the office Let's take a no look. man's sky 2 baby you have been sent to quadrant alpha one the mission is to find a new home for the crew on board of this ship. You are very quiet. Expand your ship and explore the galaxy for resources and interesting new life forms. Feel free to explore. Yeah, this just looks like a non no man's sky. To maximize crew efficiency. I'm not bothering with the volume. I I can't be asked. Okay, maybe it's not just No Man's Sky, but it gives me that feeling. It gives me that very bad feeling that's going to be now, similar. If you didn't catch the pre-show quiz, you might be wondering who my buddy is. Well, this yeah, I have it all disabled. Is Webster from I killed it. One of the PC gaming show sponsors this year, oh, and he's Jesus. got a cool competition for you: the Drake's Cake Packs giveaway. Oh yes. PAX is a gathering of PC and tabletop games, concerts, panels, exhibits, and tournaments. It's like a four-day lounge. Let's go back to Google Field. Trust. Why do I feel so anxious? Why do I feel so happy? Of course, it's not tired, alone, bloated, empty, weak, nauseous, cold, and dizzy. I don't want to hear about the fucking duck. Uh Okay. It's two people. I'm not going to go outside. Pre order video games. Uh die. To it, take it, miss you, buy, make it work, take it anymore, try it, hurt you. What? What do things mean? I'm very confused. Culture. Muppet. Christmas. Oh, back to the video games. I hope. Don't, uh, nah, don't starve.
I don't like don't starve. I won't like this. I find don't starve to be incredibly boring. Do you see how the text was cutting off from the screen there? So they have this really zoomed in for no real reason. Or the game's just a bit of a buggy mess. Hamlet. Wow. Our next title is the next installment in a series that never fails to make me laugh. It's Just Cause 4, and they have a brand new engine to bring the level of delicious insanity one notch up. Let's take is it going to be broken on AMD graphics cards again, you fucks? Okay, so is this is this gameplay footage or is this just the same thing we saw last time? At whatever conference it was, I, I don't remember. I th it was probably Microsoft. In fact, it has to be Microsoft because... Oh, let me look. Yeah, it was. Because Microsoft was the only conference that had good games in it. Okay. <sighs> he still has the wingsuit, guys. Do don't you worry, he still has the wingsuit. They didn't take out a core part of this entire game. Series. Okay, I don't think he had the wingsuit too, but he had like a pseudo wingsuit, so. To talk about it on stage now from Avalanche Studios, it's Francesco and, or excuse me, Francesco Antolini and Adam Davidson. Gentlemen, welcome. Talk to me about the tornado. <laughs> no, Shaw's gameplay. So it's uh, a very nice uh, piece of tech. It's not just beautiful, but thanks to Apex, it's also a bit boy that actually works. It's fully physicalized. Yeah. This means that it's roaming the world. Wreaking havoc and uh, it's not it's not just like a background piece. It's no, actually impacting no, no. world. This is you. just cause, man. You go there, you play with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, throughout. The I mean, yeah. If if he if you've played any ju or even seen any just cause game, you would know that it actually yeah, I mean, does uh, things to the world. To Don't be daft, man. Was bringing a lot more variety into the game, and that extends to a lot of things, but certainly the biomes of the game. So instead of one kind of region of, like, say, southern Italy, like we had last time, now you have lush rainforests, deserts, uh, grassland, and even alpine biomes, uh, all of which, you know, are rendered beautifully with the new Apex engine. Now, I mean, yeah, it looks good. To me is some of my favorite features from just Problem the is, me about, that's like, pre-rendered like, bullshit, so hooks. Like, are those give me gameplay. Everything you love from Just Cause 3 is back. Good. But Good. everything is also I mean, it's just better. There's more to do, more to discover. For example, the grappling hook is completely. I would hope so. Uh, the combat model. Otherwise, what's the point in getting it when Just Cause 30 is three bucks? New enemies, uh, new AI. Uh, we've got extreme weather that yeah. interacts with I mean, grappling hook does, and yeah, uh, parachute. Right? The wind that we saw from yes. the tornado is it just yes. like basic wind effects also get incorporated as well? Again, it just goes, so not in just an effect. So there is wind, it's physics, and acts with your parachute, grappling hook. So and the rest, yeah. Well, where can people the go fuck to get did I some? Just see? We'll call first-hand footage of what Just Cause what 4 What the hell delivered. is this? Uh, they can check it out at justcause.com. Oh, it's Cyberpunk, okay. Free in, uh, for three days. That's right. Believe it or not, E3 hasn't started yet. <laughs> starts tomorrow so yep. june 12th through 14th you can check it out thanks so oh. much for joining thanks us for on oh. stage yeah, i look forward to oh. the clarity of just cause oh now our next title is one of my all-time favorite is it now i can't wait for frankie to talk to you about the walking dead this isn't my end by the way the kill software and Starbreed oh maybe it is here's the first gameplay footage for overkills the walking dead and keep well your eyes that's embarrassing Okay, something I'm actually interested in. I think this is a Twitch issue. 
because I'm not dropping any frames on the stream. And my stream isn't breaking, so I, I think this is a Twitch issue. We were so many things. Husbands and wives, doctors and teachers. Now remember the last time a Walking Dead game was released. And I hate to bring back the bad memories of that pile of flaming shit. But I think it's important to remember what the last Walking Dead game was like. So I wanted to see proper gameplay out of this. And I can't even say, oh, well, it's overkill. It'll be fine because do you remember Raid? I mean, at least there's some gameplay in here, but it doesn't tell me anything. It was five seconds of gameplay. Well, at least we have a release date finally. November 8th. And, I have more good news. and remember, don't pre-order video games. Don't do it. For The Walking Dead, of course, coming soon, but we have a second completely different Walking Dead game that we're getting the chance to talk about right now. Oh, no. This is Telltale's The Walking Dead, the final season. Joining me on stage to talk about it is... I thought the final Ryan season was James the last Windler one. ...and the voice of Clementine herself, Melissa Hutchison. Oh, no, my immersion! No, my immersion! Oh, it's a Clementine immersion! Okay, whatever. Thanks for joining me on the stage. Our pleasure. Thank you. Now, I, I want to ask right away for, you know, people who've played through the wow. first three seasons. I, I had no idea. I did. I never would have thought Clementine looked like this. And what's some of the new? Okay, Weird. so for people who don't know Telltale, um, we are a story-based company. Um, we do, we focus on narrative. Uh, we've had our roots in um, the, the old-school point-and-click adventure games, but we've developed our own cinematic style and um, almost a signature um, mechanic, like our choice wheel. Yeah. Um, and that's, well, that's Clementine looks a lot um, different. Should, you know, the choices branch the narrative. Um, what's new this year, we have... The choices um, do not the branch the narrative. Shut the action. fuck up. Um, we've done with QTEs. And, Q, 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 yeah, yeah, Q, Q, like, Q, 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 yeah. like swipes and, and butt... <laughs> and mashes and all of that. This year, um, with the final season, we're, we're um, introducing uh, segments of unscripted combat. Yeah, that's like nice. Right here. Yeah, so Clem probably just brutalizes on me there. Of course she is. And oh yeah, so we also have like the um, the orbital cam, like the over the shoulder camera. Um, so that's yeah. like offering our players um, uh, opportunities to explore our environments, which you can also see from the B the B roll. Right. Um, is like they're looking really, really good oh, with this yeah. graphic, bla um, graphic black art style that we're employing. Yeah, because in the previous games it was much more of a directed camera from scene to scene, but now you can really sort of explore the environment on your own. Absolutely, yeah, and yeah. Now I want to ask about the story. I mean, Telltale games always have that as the central feature. Where does The Walking Dead: The Final Season start off? Okay, so it starts. Um, we, you know, Clementine is. I don't want. No, nope, no, nope, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to hear anything that's a potential spoiler in case I ever play the the third game, which I probably will at some point. Just to bring closure to the series I've put on my channel. So this is gonna stay muted for 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 this context bit. Also I can just refresh the stream. Oh my god, this is This is really bad. It's um it's only on this stream too. On my stream that I have in the background to make sure my stream going fine, it's 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 working beautifully. So I don't know what's going on. You know, a voice actress journey along with yeah. a character in a multi year journey. I mean, how long ago was the first I was, recording that you did? Well, I was two thousand twelve, but we might have even started in two thousand eleven. I don't know. We're not going to do math on it. Yeah, we're not doing a math. Bad idea. That's not happening right now. I um, think this is the last it's game. It's been a long time, and it's not only just playing one character. It's actually been aging with her, growing with her, and 
uh, falling deeper and deeper in love with her. I, this is so, the 25th game, and they said 25. Child who's, you know, as so, job, unless they don't count Sega, which they might not. In which case, not Battle Royale game, baby! Game, so oh, God. Final season is no, for the fans, please, no. And, you know, no, you're going to be playing as Clementine and protecting AJ, and uh, this is just near and dear to my I don't know who AJ is! How do you feel about the fact that this is the end? Ah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's oh, this is frozen. Super sad. I'm journey, but the, uh, I okay, fine. I'll refresh it. I didn't want to because I didn't want to have to kill these things again. But sad but happy. It's all very confusing. I think I have to. Human right now. Let's just put it that way. Well, I'm someone who's played through all of the Telltale Walking Dead games. I would love to know when the final season is coming out. Good question. August fourteenth. Um, yeah, we ship August 14th, and it's available for pre-order right now. Be sure to check it out. Don't pre-order video games. Don't. I'm not even going to pre-order Jump. If I'm not going to pre-order Jump Force or Soul Calibur 6, then you don't pre-order this. Okay? Do you? Do you really? No, no, it is just a wand. I, I do magician, or I'm a magician on the side. Um. Okay. Oh, I've I know what this is. I know what this is. I've seen this. This looks so cool. If only the stream would stop fucking up. Holy hand grenade! I get the references in this game. That's cool. This game looks really... Okay, I didn't like that. But this game looks really cool. I quite like this. I like how it said to wishlist the game and not pre-order it. I like it. I like it a lot. Joining me to talk about it are the two founders of Two Points. Theme Hospital. Oh, um, okay. Join me in welcoming Dr. Webley and Dr. Carr. Wow. Great suits. I mean, I gotta ask, as two fully trained medical professionals, how does one run a hospital in Two Point Hospital? Wait, oh my gosh, is the stethoscope eliminating your microphone? <laughs> oh, you know what? We do this every year. Come here, talk to me. What the okay. fuck? How do we run a hospital? So Did you just hear him in production yell, turn off the mic? <laughs> yeah. Talk directly at my tie. Talk, yeah, listen, you said don't talk there. Yeah. I gotta look out here. That's amazing. Just look straight at the that ground. fucked it up so bad that you could hear production. Jeez, uh, I mean, it was bound to happen. It's been about an hour since we've seen production fuck up, so it, it, it had to happen eventually. Two Point Hospital, okay. Exploring different regions and curing people with different ailments, and as you can see on the screen, we've got. Uh, this is real. We actually uh, researched this. It's uh, mm -hmm. a certain anima. And also you can train... As long people, as it's uh, not a mobile game. To be better, your nurses to be better. Just the PC show, though, so it, it's not. Wonderful cures. Good. Yeah. You know, saying everything, isn't it? Sorry, I yeah, didn't know. Yeah, great. Working. That was yeah. a bit backfilling. Carry yeah, on. so, I mean, no, no t tell me about it. Like, what is the sort of late game yeah. uh, sort of experience that you'll be playing through? Because this looks like it's quite deep into the running of a hospital. Yeah, this is later on. So uh, you start off and you're, you're you know, you're, you're researching and you're, you're training up staff, you're diagnosing illnesses, and uh, you're hopefully curing them and making money and then yeah. paying off. I see this malady. Yeah, I see this malady called turtle head. Can you explain oh, yeah. a little bit about what yeah. that is? Yes, yes. yes. It's, it's when the head 
becomes so shrunken it gets stuck in the net orifice just pops out slightly my high and uh, it has to be uh, extracted and uh, mark how how yeah, it well, get extracted yeah well this is uh, something you maybe uh We've all had, we've all been there, I know. Uh, yeah. This is one where, you know, a little bit of suction always helps. And yeah. Oh. And, that, and it's gone. And out it comes. Yeah. Now, what the fuck did that. I just That's witness? A, a real illness. Yeah, it is. It's real. Now, I, I had to ask about something that I think every young man has to deal with at some point. What, what is a monobrow infestation? Yeah. Well, monobrow is, you know, follically enhanced. enhanced. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Problem. We've, We've all been there. Yeah. Uh, I haven't. No, yeah. okay. But, but uh, yeah, it needs to be diagnosed and cured pretty quickly. If it doesn't, it'll I, 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 You know, and, uh, you I'm being silent because I'm trying to ascertain and what I'm looking at right now. It will actually leave the body and it needs to be got rid of uh, before yeah, the health inspectors arrive. It looks like the monobrows are multiplying in the hospital. They, they breed very, yeah, they're big breeders. The monobrows. Yeah, they, like, yeah. uh, they like dirty places. Uh, Disgusting. So you've got to keep your hospital clean and well maintained. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to breed. I hope. I hope you I can sort of how the game over figure out where those are, because otherwise, the, like specific the, locations where I was on, instead of having to pick up everything, yeah, so or was that could get annoying. It could get very annoying. And then you move on through two point <coughs> There's different regions. There's a cold region. There's warm regions with. Uh, well. Contagious diseases, and you know, there's, there's poor there's regions, there's rich well. regions. Yeah. You know, yeah. I didn't so think there was going to be a new theme hospital yeah, exactly. ever, so that's cool. Weird effects can happen in different parts of the world. So it might struggle to manage your hospital empire because yeah. a volcano went off nearby. Yeah, it's about spinning plates, isn't it? You've got everything set up nicely, and then something uh, happens. Uh, well. Well, I'd love to know more information mm -hmm. about when two point. They talked about more than twenty-five games. Well, we're coming up to four, mm. and uh, you can check us out by going onto our Steam page and hopefully wish listing. Is it just me or does this guy kind of look like a younger Donald Trump? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, At least with the side profile. Looking forward to it coming out. Thanks so much. Maybe for it's just me. me. Doctor and Doctor, thank you. Thank talk you. about Two Point Hospital. That's it. Now, our second Battle Royale game of the afternoon takes a fantasy RPG-esque bent, and you may have even seen it getting streamed on Twitch in the previous week. It wasn't so it. Look at hi Res's Realm Royale. No! No, hi Res. Why did you do this? hi Res. hi Res, you're why? Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm having a heart attack. Uh. Joining me to talk about Realm Royale is the executive producer at High Res Studios. It's Rory Nubro, aka Dry Bear. Mr. Dry Bear, what separates Realm Royale? Wait, what the fuck? Dry Bear works at High Res again? That's a good question. So before you go up into the air to determine where you land on the map, since you when? Choose from a list of fantasy. He's got the fucking asshole. Or hunter or assassin. Specify a unique play style before you land. How do these different classes work? So the engineer will be more about bunkering What the hell? Since when does he work at Hires? I thought he quit. We'll get behind the lines using stealth, use a sniper rifle to take out yeah. targets, and the warrior will just jump in there throwing axes and being crazy. And, you know, in some of the streams that I've watched, it also seemed like there were abilities, not just the loot. What the fuck? Can you talk to me about how the abilities I think I am high. Once you choose a class, it'll come with a set of abilities, and you'll actually be upgrading these. Try bear, shut the fuck up. We don't want to hear about your goddamn battle royale bullshit. Bullshit cash grab. All you did was you ruined Paladins and you realized, well, we got a dead game because we fucked everything up. How about we just take all of the assets from it and put it into a Battle Royale game? We're really excited about this. So strewn across the map, there are places called forges. And so once you go to the forge, you'll collect shards from disenchanting loot you find as you're going about. 
and you'll use these shards to start crafting legendary gear, very powerful pieces that everyone will want. Yeah. Once you start the forge, the I do not have any more lead. Everyone comes over to like fight. Mini objective even. I fight. can't write any so more games down. I know down. that Realm Royale is currently available for free on Steam, but I hear that you have some goodies people can check out that are E3 exclusive. That's right. So free on Steam, we're actually out for less than a week now, and we are already number four on Steam charts. And this week at, at E3, through Mixer, if you stream on Mixer and you're playing, the streamer that gets closest to the Crown Royale will enter into the hype zone, and so everyone will see you on, you'll be featured on the main page of Mixer, and you'll have a chance to win Jesus the Jesus Christ. Game, which is our first piece of cosmetic. It's a little chicken with this like, a little is sad. Like, yeah. It's sad to see how far high us yeah, has fallen. The chicken mechanic, seriously, please look it up right now. Rory, thanks so much for joining me on stage to talk about Realm Royale. Once thanks, again, sir. it's for free on Steam right now. Our next game is one that was shown at last year's PC Gaming Show, and Frankie has some updates of what they've been up to. Yes, John, as you may remember, our next game is made by a core team of just two people. It's called Ooblet, and it's a farming and creature collecting indie inspired by Pokemon, Harvest Moon, and Animal Crossing. I have to put this on my it's phone now because I don't have a pencil. A unique combat system, along with plenty of cute Ooblets and environments. Ooblet? Yeah, okay, th there's no way I'm not high. There's no way. I have to be. I know I have more lead somewhere. This is just a not farming game, isn't it? Couldn't give less of a shit, to be honest. Couldn't give a single flying fuck. I find farming games to be incredibly monotonous and boring. So, if, if it's in our farming game, which is what it looks like, I now, don't care. It wouldn't be a PC gaming show without a dash of strategy, which is why I'm delighted. True. That we get the chance to share with you the next in the Anno games. Let's take a look at Anno 1880. Okay. New Anno. Not, not fucking mobile. Sure. Why not? Hasn't it been a while since an Anno game came out? I feel like it has been. Let me look. Joining me on the stage to talk about it is the executive producer, Burkhart Ratheiser, and community developer, Bastian Thun. Yeah, it's been since 2015. Well, gentlemen, well, new Anno game, hopefully stage. it's good. I want to begin right away by asking, you know, for people who haven't seen or experienced the Anno series. Because Anno games haven't really, because like, they're, they're yeah, well, strategy games, I, I think is, they're, uh, they're considered, they see, eh. Um, only. Um, real -time strategy game. So I hope and, um, that it's kind of uh, mixing. Um, it's good. City building together the people with, who um, economic simulation like those kinds of games. And naval warfare. And at its core, it's um, it's a sandbox game. So um, you have a, a free um, a vast amount of freedom yeah. to explore. Where in the um, actual to, fuck is all um, my land? The world and build huge cities. And I wonder if you could talk to me a little bit about why the choice... Yeah, this show's sense. almost over. I'll just write these down on my phone, century, and then I'll... interesting and rich era. There, um, there was so much um, 
um, happening in this era. Oh. So we had uh, two um, fine line between this and uh, Sony conference. We had scientific inventions um, uh, and uh, also big social changes and also the great the creation of the big imperial empires. So it's a yeah. really rich era. And what are some of the elements that we'll get to see from the 19th century in and the 1800s? So it's it's kind of for the player. It's uh, well, basically you start you, with the first um, kind of medieval s settlements, yeah. and then it's a kind of kind of a journey through the 19th century. So it's a kind of you explore everything that kind of happened in, the, yeah. in this rich uh, era. And I understand that I say that, but yeah, I'm still you have a very looking for unique take on how to work with the community, how to gather feedback. I was wondering if you could talk to me about what is Anno Union. So last year at Gamescom, when we actually revealed the game, we decided on, you know what, it's pre-alpha, we revealed the game, we invited the community. There's a lot of people saying pre-alpha, huh? Of our, uh, a lot team. of people saying so pre-alpha. It's a place where we give constant weekly wow. uh, updates on the current yeah. It's not what a pre-alpha is, you feedback and dinguses. basically help us developing the game. Can you give me like an example of exactly how some choices have been steered by the community? So there's a lot of different stuff we did. So like from uh, the feedback we got on our blogs and uh, focus playtests where invited players we got so much great feedback, uh, which had to completely rebalance the mid and late game of uh, uh, the game. Also, we heavily. Oh, well, that's good. If they're taking the feedback from the community the and remaking the game with okay, that in mind, seems then really uh, seems to work. Players like that. So okay, let's hopefully it it'll be a good one. A little bit even more. Yeah. But um, they can also vote on actual game content. So we had a big vote for an AI opponent in the game, yeah. for community creation content. Well, it's 1800, not 1880. And, and I understand that some of this mm -hmm. uh, footage that you're sharing right now is pieces that people can go to anno-union.com and vote on right now. Exactly. So right just in time for E3, you can go to anno-union.com, check out. We have a vote up where you can vote on one of five ships in the game. And that's only the first stage, because in the second stage, we will allow you to design your own ship variant. So the winner of that uh, first vote, then you can design, hand in your own design nodes, drawings, 3D models, whatever you like. And the winner of that contest will actually make it into the game. Now, where is the website that people can go to again to get the most information right now? <sighs> yeah, just check out anno-union.com. That's basically our big community platform. And we want to, to invite especially strategy gamers, PC players. Yeah. Man, I really didn't expect to sit through the entire PC gaming, gaming show. So this is... Thank you for joining me on stage to talk about... Oh. Anno 1800. Okay. Our next title is the final battle royale of the night. And Frankie... Going to be God, I'm going to fucking bit. shoot Maybe myself. God damn. Tiny build. Battle Royale. Oh, and it's Tiny Build, too. Of course it is. With cluster trucks, speedrunners, and Hello Neighbor among their catalog of hits. And now I'm delighted to be able to bring you the world exclusive reveal of a game developed by Galvanic Games in cooperation with Explosion. Ah, Inspired by the that's strange. My eye is bleeding. Rapture Rejects is Battle Royale as you've never seen one before, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not. Uh-huh. Right. And basically bonkers. Let's take a look at what happens when the man upstairs makes an epic fail and only beams up the bad people. Introducing Rapture Rejects. Yeah, after Tiny Bill's press conference, I refuse to buy anything from them again. Dear God, every day I strive to be closer to your light. I pray that when Judgment Day, that most holiest of days, comes upon us, so the ruining cyanide and happiness with a battle royale game. You've got to be kidding me. Ha 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 ha! Thanks, bro. Ha 
Well, that was quick. I'm not entertained. <laughs> please laugh. Please, please, for the love of God, laugh. Please. <laughs> I can't believe we got to show that trailer. That's <laughs> I can't believe it either. <laughs> Our final game that we will be showcasing this evening is from perhaps the most famous stealth action franchise in gaming. Swin Cell? Series. Let's take a look at oh. a brand new trailer from Hitman 2. Oh. You got me excited, and then you immediately let me down. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. The Providence defectors are Robert. If it has the same system as the last one, where you have to pay for the individual levels then I'm not going to be impressed, and I'm not going to play it. Because that payment system was ridiculous. Ha! Guys, he slapped him with a fish! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Please laugh or they're going to kill me. Yep, they only showed one map. They only showed one map, so it's probably going to have exactly the same system as the last one. And in that case, not gonna buy it. Come on out, we gotta talk. Assassination. Hey, Sean. Welcome, Jacob. Thanks for joining me. I mean, right away. Tell me, what is Agent 47 doing in Miami? Well, you know, they said it was going to be 90 minutes. It's been 105. And yeah, we all know how that ends, right? Well, given that it's a Hitman game, I have some hints. And, you know, I always felt like in the Hitman games, the environment was so critical, trying to study and trying to understand it. What are some of the elements in Miami that will show up in Hitman 2. Yeah, well, absolutely. Miami is, uh, I think it's one of the biggest events we've ever created in, in the game. And uh, in Miami, we have, of course, the race as the centerpiece. Yeah. But being this super high detailed sandbox, we also go to great lengths to actually create all the surrounding uh, bits and pieces, uh, like you have here, backstage area. Of yeah. course, we also have that in Miami. So pits and paddocks, there's an emergency room. Just tell me if you have the individual levels that you have to you purchase or not. Make your own way through and take advantage of the locations and all the different disguises and items you stumble upon. Yes, it's it's Hitman. It's a Hitman game. We and get it. The mechanics, I know that there is going to be a lot of the familiar feels, but what are some of the brand new mechanics that are in Hitman? Yeah, some of the new stuff is, uh, for instance, uh, the crowds we saw so here in Miami. Uh, first of all, there's more than ever. Yeah, uh, huge. There's, we're close to 2,000 people now in the scenes. And uh, on top of that, we also introduced a new crowd mechanic where you uh, you can dip into the crowd if you get in trouble. So as long as they didn't they have this in Blood Money though? Didn't they have? They did. They had a level where there was another new thing is the picture in picture an entire an entire street block filled with people. Of course, they had to cut some corners with some of them, but you still got the same effect. So it's not impressive. But this time, it's not only for, for sniper rifles, it's also for all the other things you want to carry around, kind of without causing too much attention to yourself. And I want to ask about some of the weapons and the disguises that have been showing up throughout these trailers. Yeah, we go to great lengths. I think the, the, the theme of, uh, of this showing is going to be the fish. It's really a, it's a studio favorite. Uh, we, <laughs> we're having a, a lot of laughs uh, at yeah. that, right? And then, and then, of course, you just saw it in the kitchen. That's a frying pan. So we all know the kitchen is the most dangerous 
house, uh, room in your house, right? Yeah, so yeah, of course. Also comes from Hitman. And I, I want to ask about some of my favorite content from Hitman, things like elusive targets, limited time events. Will those be making a comeback? Absolutely. So there's still going to be escalations for you to kind of challenge the game in many different ways. Uh, there's going to be uh, challenge packs, uh, mm -hmm. again, new challenge for you. And then, of course, the elusive targets that pop up for a short period of time only. And you have one shot at this or, yeah, oh, yeah. robust. As my final question, the expected question, when does Hitman 2 come out? Hitman 2 comes out November 3rd, November 13th. That's not the question I had, Mr. Man. A new game mode called Sniper Assassin, where you get to play as Agent 47, and also... That's not a new game mode, though. ...along with a friend in the co-op mode. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for coming out. I'm super looking forward to Hitman 2. I'm not. It might be the worst Hitman ever. But I try hard. Now, Jacob, I'm going to thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to escort you off to the right. So you're going to rush off this way. Because coming in from the left, for the first time ever, vaguely nearby me, it's the co-host Frankie. Come here, Frankie. Man, this has been almost two hours. Good behavior. Excellent. Well, Frankie, we did it. We the did. PC gaming show is done. You need to so button up your shirt a bit. Here. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for all of you who came out to the Will Turn and joined us today. It was a blast. Thanks to Twitch chat. I know that everything you said was appropriate and intelligently thought out. And of course, this year we're curating even more great PC games from the Facebook booth in E3 South Hall. Last, well, and of course, not least, a huge thank you to all our wonderful sponsors who let the PC Gaming Show come back for a fourth straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, I mean, they gave us games. Second best conference if you don't call, count Devolver, but it's not that hard to do that. But I never thought I'd say the PC gaming show was the second best conference. I, I didn't expect it to actually be much of anything. I expected it to be a pile of garbage, and I was going to stop watching it five minutes through. And I was going to move out with my life until Sony happened, but I ended up watching the full thing. So, let's go through the list. And it's it's long. It's longer than, than Microsoft's. It has five more games than Microsoft did. So, oh god, and I talked about Microsoft for half an hour. Then again, I don't care about most of these games, so I won't have much to talk about. So, let's try speedrunning this thing. Satisfactory, first person factorial, looks good for people who like the management games, the 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 factory building, the micromanagement games. It looks like it could be cool. I just wish that there is an option for a top-down view instead of it only being first person. It looks like there is, kind of, but more... In the sense that you can see everything from a top-down view. Neocab. Looks like a Newgrounds game from 2005. Nothing really interesting about it. Don't care about it. They didn't give us any information on it. Nothing to talk about. Looks bad. Uh, Maverick's Proving Grounds. It's a fucking shitty Battle Royale game. Fuck that thing. The Forgotten City. I don't remember what it was. What was The Forgotten City? Oh, it was that. It was that game that's already been now that's been released by what's their face, uh, it, uh, the, the CryEngine people. Um, it's already been released. I can't talk about it. I haven't played it. No, nothing to say. If you've played it, you know what it is. I think it looks neat, but it has mostly positive reviews on Steam. So I I I, I don't know. Star Control Origins. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was Star Control Origins? Oh no. Star Control Origins, what was this? Oh, it was that shitty space game. Yeah, it looks like garbage. It 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 it, it has nothing to it. It's a bad indie game. It looks bland and boring and it's not going to be good. Hunt Showdown. The fuck was Hunt Showdown? See, most of these games were just weren't memorable, so I don't remember them. Oh, it's already on Steam. It has mostly positive reviews. Uh, wait, no, this is the 
the Crytek game. Wait, so what was the Forgotten City? Oh, that was the L.A. Noir-esque. That was the L.A. Noir-esque uh, game. I don't like the, the idea of a sanity system. I think that might potentially ruin the game. But if it's not too bad, I think it'll be good. But there's no information on it, so can't say anything about it. A sinking City was some form of indie game. I think... City. Wait, no, the sink. That was the sinking city. Oh my, what the fuck was the forgotten city then? Oh, it was that mod thing. Okay, this the forgotten city was some mod thing that looks incredibly boring. Don't really have much to say about it. It it just it, it looks like a mod. It definitely looks like a mod. Um. Anyway, Warframe. I can't really say on it. It's one of those things that's for Warframe fans. I tried getting into Warframe many years ago. Couldn't get into it. I, li I liked it, but it's it's so hard to get into that I, I couldn't be bothered. So, I can't really speak on it. Sega PC. Yakuza is coming to PC. I, I think that's the highlight of all of E3, is that Yakuza is coming to PC. I, and that's all I can say about it. And then a, a few other Sega con console games are coming to PC is, is great. That's the highlight of E3. I... I, I by Yakuza 0. It's, it's the best game ever made. Killing Floor 2. Uh, they had some form of DLC. Not going to make me play the game again. The game got boring very quickly. There's such, there's too limited of a variety of weapons. And uh, and the bosses are uh, like two bosses, two or three bosses. It's just... It gets, it's bland. It's, it looks cool, and it is cool at first, but it, it gets bland very quickly, and I don't think a DLC is going to change my mind on that and make me want to play it. Maneater. Oh, right. Yeah, they, they didn't say anything about it, so... I can't... There's not, I can't say anything about it. Bravery. I think it was the the same way. They they had a thing that looked like it was a farming simulator, then suddenly it wasn't, and then nothing. So, great. Uh, thanks for that. Morning Star. I, j I f already forgot what Morning Star was. I knew what it was, and then I forgot what it was. It was... It was... Was it... <clears throat> I think it was the... Oh, let me let me look it up so I don't fuck this up again. Oh no, Morning Star was that. See, this is why I should just look these things up. So that was I thought I thought bravery was Morning Star. Hold on. Oh, Bravery was that weird turn-based combat game. There was no information on it. So, again, can't say anything about it. Jurassic World, it's another uh, world management game. I, I think it's... I think there are too many of... If you're a fan of Jurassic Park and you're a really big fan of world management, sure. But it's a very niche and specific... Well, I say niche and specific. That kind of means the same thing. But it's a very niche audience, and I don't care for it. I don't think a lot of people are going to care for it because there's so many world-building games anyway. And it doesn't seem like it does anything really new except you can make dinosaurs and you can be in Jurassic Park. Or, well, you make Jurassic Park. Eh. 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 Stormland VR... I said my piece on VR. Stormland, Stormland seems like it falls into the same category of games that I hate in VR, and I'm not at all looking forward to it. But I'm in the minority when it comes to opinions on VR because I just can't. I'm too jaded. 
I, you should know from watching these conferences, I'm way too jaded to give a fuck about VR like everyone else does. So, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people who play VR games will like it. I'm one of the few people who definitely won't. What the fuck is a night call? What the hell is a night call? A narrative in noir. Oh. It, another game that we got no information on. It was just like, here's a game that exists. Okay, bye. Can't say anything on it. Sable, the, the art style is cool and unique, which is a rarity for any game nowadays for it to be as unique as it is, but it looks boring. And because they said it's a open world uh, adventure game with no real plot or meaning behind it. It's one of those things where you go around and you explore the world. I don't like those. I think those are boring. Uh, someone might get a kick out of it. Uh, if it's not more than $5, I'd say it's... N no matter who you are, I don't think it would be worth it. But for a two-person team, looks pretty good. Star Citizen, there's no gameplay. There, there's still nothing about it. We don't have a release date. I don't see why they bothered. They need to actually give us some form of release date or some updated gameplay or just something other than pre-rendered bullshit trailers in order for me to care about it. In fact, no, no, not, not that. I need to see people actually playing the game at this point. We've seen gameplay of it before. We know what gameplay looks like. I want to see people actually playing the game. And they said that you'll be able to coming soon. So that doesn't tell me anything. Don't Starve Hamlet, not fan of the Don't Starve Games, can't speak for it, looks like another Don't Starve game, great for people who like Don't Starve Games, for me, I'm not going to play it, and I'm going to pay it no mind, Just Cause 4, I gave my thoughts on Just Cause 4 on the Microsoft conference, they haven't changed in this one, Overkill's The Walking Dead, still haven't shown us gameplay, if you remember the last Walking Dead game we got on PC, I'm I'm very skeptical, even though it's overkill, and I'm going to wait for gameplay, especially because, uh, what, what the fuck is it called? What, what is it even called? Raid? Just, especially because Raid exists, and we know how bad that was. So, I'm, I'm waiting. Telltale's The Walking Dead. I thought it ended after season three. There's a nice season. At least they're finally closing that goddamn game. I, I'll probably play it at some point for the channel, but... It, I don't know, it's an odd Telltale Walking Dead, it's an odd Telltale game, who cares at this point, I don't. There was the Pixelated Roguelike, which name I didn't get, that's a game I have, I saw a long time ago, I was interested in it, I think they gave a release date, but I can't remember, I'm looking forward to that though, that's going to be nice. Two Point Hospital, aka Theme Hospital 2, I think is what they were dubbing it. Looks like more theme hospital, only not from 1998. So good, good. Theme hospital was a was a good management game. So people who like that and people who like those that genre of game, it's going to be a great game. I'm well probably. Realm Royale. Oblet. The fuck was an Oblet? Wasn't that a farming game? Oh, it was a farming game. Uh, well, we... I mean, I don't like farming games, so obviously I'm biased, but... It, it looks like... It looks like one of those things where why would you play this when this... Stardew. That... And we don't... Again, we don't have any information on it. They're like, here's a game. Okay, bye. So, that's great. I don't know, 1800. I know it's been a pretty eh series but it sounds like they're actually listening to community and trying to make it good so i assume that it's going to be good which is good 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 rapture rejects makes me want to shoot myself and then speaking of shooting myself hitman 2 it has the same payment system as the first one which 
as far as I'm concerned, was terrible. Not looking forward to it. Probably not going to buy it until it's extremely cheap. And that was the PC Gaming Show. To sum up the PC Gaming Show, we have no information on it. But, at, you know, at least it wasn't talking about AMD for two hours. So that's good. And that's... And it was a surprise. It was a surprise, and I hope they continue to do that for the next few years. And I hope that the games that they show us are actually things that, you know, give us information about the game instead of just being, here's a game. Okay, bye. Like, I, I, I like that when you actually give us information about the game. I like when they give us information about the game and then go on to the next one. When they show gameplay and the trailer, well, mostly gameplay, but even a trailer that actually gives us information about the game and then goes on to the next one, like what Microsoft did. I like that. And it looks like what PC Gaming tried to do is they tried to replicate that, but it didn't work because we got no information on about 80% of the games that they showed off. So that's unfortunate. And I don't, there's nothing that was really announced that I care about except for the Sega games coming to PC. Uh, especially the Yakuza series, which again, it's, it's the highlight of E3, but as a whole for the, the the conference, it's better than the usual PC gaming show. I'm glad that they're trying now, but it's... They need, they need to work on it. They need to work on it a bit more. They need to... I, I, I have hopes that it's going to be better next year. But it, it was pretty mediocre. But I'm glad that they kept going through games. It's just that the games they showed were kind of uninformative. Uninformative shit. So, anyway. I'm going to be back for Sony in approximately 57 minutes. I'm going to go rest and eat. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That was... That was something. Hey, <sighs> my thoughts dying. Okay, bye.